Okay, we'll start the stream on this and see how this works out. I'm having issues with the stream. Hello, everybody. We got things a little different here, and I'm paying a price for it, I guess. I'm just going to wait and see what happens here. Hi, Diver Dude, Anthers, Mickey, Mervin, DC, Sergeant, Brian, Missing Sky, Starlight. Hi, Kate. I'll get over to you guys in a moment. Ping. Hey, everybody. We are trying to stream tonight. I'm not sure what the hell is going on. I know I screwed up. Let's see what happens here. Hang on a second. We got flashing lights, eh? Wow. That's a brutal. Ding, ding, ding. No sound? No sound? I got sound on my end. Yeah, sound. We got sound. Radioactive banana. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with the lighting. The lighting is... I think I what I done was I put in... Um, 1080 by 720 whoops and the lighting is in and out so I might have to just go audio for you folks tonight scroll down or something I don't know how much I can do I don't know why the audio is doing that that's the weirdest darn thing I've ever seen and everything is set for the stream so maybe I got too big of a stream here ping says it got sound Lori says, sees me. Checks and balances says, it's okay. Lighting's a bit weird. Flashing lights on the visual. Dana, DC. Sergeant Dana's a rock star. That's, I wish. Not really. How's the audio coming in? We got different audio. Is this any better? Is this any worse than the other audio? That I can do in real time. It's a bad video. Yeah. MS, MSPS says, really bad video. And I don't know what to do with it. I don't know why it's flashy, blingy, blingy. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll pop out for a second. I'm going to... There'll be no rest for the wicked. Brutal. Okay, I don't know what the hell is going on here now. Are we streaming yet? Are we streaming? I got no idea what's going on. Smoke break. <sighs> Sorry, folks. I'll put a notation at the beginning of the video to skip ahead to wherever the frig we get this sorted out. Usually we have no issues. Is there, am I missing something? Hi Green Road Project. Am I streaming anybody? Somebody? I guess maybe we're not going to get a stream tonight. Now it's fine. It's good. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I guess. <laughs> Looks good. Okay, here we go. In that case, sorry folks. The light's all fixed. We're not got crappy shit going on. Audio's okay. Moved later the camera. It says original camera iris is hunting. Yeah, it's because I had it on 15 frames a second. Oops. And it's supposed to be 20 frames a second. So everything looks good. Quite clear the image is washed out in the corner. Well, that's because I got an extra light up there. Looking good now. Nice. Yeah, it's fine. Fine. Yep. Okay, I'll put a notation here. Seven minutes in. Uh, Mr. Screw Up finally got it straight. Yeah, that was a rough one. Okay, well, <laughs> and the audio is good, right? 
Serge still got me up as a rock star. I know I look good, Serge, but do I sound good is the big question. We don't know. Thank you. All good, perfect, looks normal, seems good. Okay, folks. Alrighty, strobe is gone, yeah. That's because I had it 15 frames a second. Oops. Friggin' Adobe. Okay, so last uh, last night, uh, lagging video. What else is now? Well, as long as the audio is good, I guess. Yeah, as long as the audio is good. Uh, my computer got hacked. Um, my email's hacked. Can't get into it. Uh, the Fukushima Hounds. Um, has been hacked. Kate and Pasha has gone crazy over the last couple of days. And so i got to reformat my other computer. And I don't know if I can get back into Fukushima Hounds because my email won't let me in without giving them my phone number. They said there's all kinds of activity going on in my account. This is, a, this is an issue <laughs> that I've ran into. That's two computers in six weeks. And remember, I I do software. I'm a software. Well, I'm not an actual engineer, but that's what I do. I'm a software engineer. I got no formal training, but something I've been at for almost a decade. And that's uh, what I do for a living, right? And so that's uh, you know, in the last two years, it's five computers I've had taken down. Now, the one I had six weeks ago, I reformatted the whole friggin' thing and finally got it up running again. And so I kept that one offline, totally offline now. But now my other computer is hacked and my email. So And uh, the chat room for the Fukushima Hounds, there's a link below. And I can't even uh, get in there and read it because I can't even get into my email. So it's like, ah, and I don't want to start another account until I work things out here. I don't know. Anyway, here we go. These cigarettes haven't got 4,000 chemicals, no filter. The filter makes the cigarettes smaller. The 4,000 chemicals, whose idea was that to put into your cigarettes? And um, these are true plain. But think about that one. The average cigarette got 4,000 chemicals in it. And so if your system actually cared about you, if the EPA cared, why would they grandfather in 65,000 chemicals? And that's why it allowed to use 4,000 chemicals legally in your cigarette. And I just say that because I want to educate people. These haven't got that issue. Okay. I don't know who I was hacked by, Travis. Hi, Sylvia. Kathy Reed. Now, if anybody don't know what's going on, last night we covered 1940 to 1958 for a whole hour. Tonight we lost 10 minutes, 11 minutes already. Well, I'm not sure. Those couple of minutes will disappear a couple of minutes because I went offline. Annabeck says it's always lagging for her. Yeah, the hacking shit has gone crazy, Sergeant. Okay, let me continue on because this is actually really important that everybody have a good handle on what the government has really been up to, what the nuclear apologist, the industry, has really been up to. So there's been 2,500 recorded nuclear detonations, nuclear testing, and each nuclear testing... Uh, now, they say a nuclear weapon, when it goes off, releases around 5% uh, of it is ionizing, what they call ionizing radiation. 5% of the bomb, because you have the big explosion, and that's thermal, that's heat, blah, blah, blah. Right, and you have the detonation, you have the winds with it, and stuff like that. And so far, I'm not sure what they mean by that. i got to work on that one, try to figure out what they're up to with that. Because they lie every step of the way. But 5% of the nuclear detonation, of 2,500 detonations, and so you have to take each detonation, uh, 2,500 and divide it by 20 to get uh, what we used to call the number of, oh, jeez. Firefox gone crazy on this computer, blah, 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 gone crazy on that computer. And so let me keep going because this gets a little harder each time. And in the big years 
I'll just run over some of that again for everybody, get everybody acclimated back to where we left off last night. 1945 to 2013, worldwide nuclear testing. 1962 was the big year, 51 years ago. Also, 1958 was a huge year, over 100. 140 in uh, 62, I forgot to mention. And then in 66, 67, or 67, 68, 69, uh, they were all around 85 and 90, and right all the way up until 89, excuse me, they were going at least somewhere 45 to 60 nuclear tests a year, so they were big years. All the way from, basically all the way from 19, uh, the big years, uh, 1961, steady every single year, it was huge around the world anyway, huge. And so when you hear about the radiation from Nagasaki and Japan, think about each one of these bombs. What they're trying to tell you is that only 5% of the damage was caused, or 5% of the damage was ionizing radiation. The rest of it was explosive power and winds and fire and stuff like that. And then heat generated from the bomb itself. Okay. All right, whatever. 5% of the energy released in a nuclear air burst is in the form of ionizing radiation, neutrons, gamma rays, alphas, particles, electrons, moving at the speed, speeds up to the speed of light almost. Gamma rays, so the gamma is the better than the alphas that are emitting from particles and atoms, are moving at almost the speed of light. That's it. You can't have those speeds without energy. And it does those speeds for the entire lifetime of the isotope or the particle or the atom. And like an atom's negatives and positive, and that dictates what kind of isotope is in it, in the atom itself, right? So the atom, when you see 20, 20, 20 million atoms or 20 million atoms in the rainfall, each one of those atoms is an isotope in California after rain in a liter of water. Think about that one. Or 40 million in the kelp beds because kelp accumulates the radioactivity that's washing out of the community and the rain will wash the radiation, not all of it by no means, but a lot of it back down to the coastline because that's where the water goes. In Canada, on the west side of the Rocky Mountains, everything goes to the Pacific Ocean. And on the, north, on the east side of the Rocky Mountains, everything goes to the Atlantic Ocean which is another 6,000 kilometers away, right? Down to Saskatchewan, the Manitoba, out to the St. Lawrence. And by the way, the St. Lawrence, they lost a nuclear weapon there, right? We covered that last night in the 50s. And we had a rough stream getting started tonight. Let's keep going and try to get something out of it anyway. Uh, and once again, there was 22 million bombs average a year made at McAllister, bomb manufacturer McAllister, Oklahoma, and now and that was during the Vietnam War, say, 22 million bombs a year, and then I'll get into everything else. And just remember, now they only make uh, uranium bombs, depleted, what they call depleted uranium, uranium-238, this gone through a chain reaction, and it's ionized. And they always try to muddle the water and say, no, you know, the stuff that comes out is okay, Dana. It's harmless. You might want to tell that to all the soldiers with rectal cancer, tell that to the soldiers with the deformed children. You might want to tell that to the women in Fallujah where 80% of the babies are born with no eyes, no arms, no mouth, uh, just lumps of flesh, where women don't even want to have children anymore in Fallujah or Iraq because they use the... Now, and you have to be... Think about uh, uranium-238, depleted uranium is contaminated with all the americiums, the neptuniums, the plutoniums. It's dirty on top of that, right? And you can't turn off the weapon after the war is over. And so when you shoot those bullets to the air, they're releasing the atoms, right? As it goes through the air, it's um, pyroplastic, is it? So it catches fire as it's going through the air. It's releasing massive amounts of atoms. Remember, a gram releases more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. And say the A-10 Warthog, it's shooting 10 pound solid uranium-238 and it's not tipped and it's not coated. 
But anyway, let's keep going. McAllister bond manufacturer, McAllister, Oklahoma, is putting out 20 train car loads a day of depleted uranium rounds. And remember that the uranium-238, uh, the A-10 Warthog shoots a ton and a half of this stuff a minute. And that's the equivalent of um, 71 Nagasaki bombs worth of radiation. Remember, each bomb is only 5% of that was radiation. The rest of it was blast and damage and everything else. But you, you know, if uh, you ingest one of those radioactive isotopes 50 years later of the uranium or the plutonium, it'll still give you the exact same cancer as it would that day. If you, uh, someone ingested a, a, a billion years down the road, it'll give you the same cancer as it would the very day it was created. It was liberated, I should say. Here we go. Albert Stevens, the man, uh, and I'm just going to touch on 1945. We'll jump up to 1958 right quick here. I just got a couple of these headlines. A man misdiagnosed with stomach cancer <laughs> received treatments for his cancer at the UC San Francisco Medical Center in 1945. Dr. Joseph Gilbert Hamilton, a Manhattan Project daughter, daughter, doctor in charge of the human daughter, <laughs> doctor in charge of the human experiments in California, had Stevens injected with plutonium-238 and plutonium-239 without informed consent, Stevens never had cancer, and his surgery to move cancerous cells was highly successful, because <laughs> he didn't have it. And he lived for another 20 years with the injected plutonium. Now, uh, he was cremated, and his remains were acquired by the Argoni National Laboratory Center for Human uh, Radiobiology in 1975 without the consent of the surviving relatives. They went and dug them up because they wanted to know how that plutonium that he didn't even know he had, they went back to look for that data. They went back 20 years later to get that data and they dug them up. This is how maniacal these people are. Uh, and uh, it was transferred to the National Human Radiobiology Tissue Repository at the Washington State University, Washington State University, which keeps the remains of people who have died having radioisotopes in their bodies. So it goes out and collects that. What a, what a twisted spectacle that place might, might be. Three patients at Billing Hospital, this is 1945, at the University of Chicago were injected with plutonium-46, rather. Six employees of Chicago lab were given water that was contaminated with plutonium-239 so that researchers could study how plutonium absorbed into the digestive tract. An 18-year-old woman at the upstate New York hospital expecting to be treated for pituitary gland disorder was injected with plutonium. And so last night we were covering how hospitals and universities that we, we turn to now for information were vicious, were just vicious, were sick and twisted. And that legacy has never went away. They're doing the same thing today, but on a mass scale. During the late 1950s at Columbia University and Monte Firo Hospital, the Bronx, 12 terminal cancer patients were injected with radioactive calcium and strontium. This experiment was designed to compare the distribution of these two substances among body tissues after autopsies. <laughs> Her cases, that was 1950. Castle, and here was another one I want to touch up on, 1954. Castle Bravo was the code name given to the first United States test of a dry fuel hydrogen bomb detonated March the 1st, uh, 1954 to Bikini Atoll, Marshall Islands. And let me keep going down further so we don't waste too much time. They, they got these people to return to the islands three years later, but they were removed again when the island was found to be unsafe. Just like Japan, where they, three years later they're trying to move people back into Fukushima. And these people, I mean, they've been at this since the 1940s, injecting people. They know exactly how dangerous this is. They know. And remember, there was that... Um, the Lucky Dragon, number five, was also contaminated by fallout back then, killing one of the crew members. Uh, the... But the Bikini Atoll, I mean, these people were literally destroyed. 1958, uh, I left off. They were trying to create an artificial 
uh, Van Allen built in near space and they detonated three nuclear weapons up there. Trying to create an artificial Van Allen belt in 1958. Twisted, it, they meant it. February 5th, 1958, Savannah, Georgia. Um, a USAF B-47 bomber jettisoned a Mark 15 nuclear bomb over the Atlantic Ocean after a mid-air collision. Pilots ejected. Uh, we covered that one last night. I'm just trying to get you back into it. Uh, 1958, March 11th, a B-47 bomber flying from Hunter Air Force Base in Savannah, Georgia, accidentally released an atomic bomb. How do you accidentally release an atomic bomb? It's like you got a switch to you're not allowed to touch it, and no one's around, so you reach over and click on it. And I wonder what that's going to really happen. Nah, it won't really get released. Oh, the plane's a lot lighter. Flying. A home was destroyed. And several people injured, but the bomb's plutonium core did not explode. So why wasn't that guy fired? Why didn't they stop using planes with the word B? It uh, starts with the word B, because everything with a B on it dropped a nuclear weapon in the military. June 1958, a super critical portion of highly enriched urinal nitrate was allowed to collect in a drum cause and a prompt neutron criticality in the C1 ring of blah, 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 Oak Ridge National Laboratory, Y2 Complex. These, these folks at Oak Ridge? Holy! They are some twisted individuals. Eight employees were in close proximity to the drum during the accident, receiving neutron doses and uh, up to 447 rims. Hoo-hoo! <laughs> December 30th, Los Alamos, New Mexico, USA. Accidental criticality during chemical purification. A critical mass of plutonium solution was accidentally assembled at the Los Alamos National Laboratory. A chemical operator named Cecil died of acute radiation sickness. And the March 1961 journal, Occupational Environmental Medicine, printed a special supplement medical analyzing this accident. Hand manipulation of critical assemblies were abandoned as a matter of policy in U.S. federal facilities after this accident. There are some sick and twisted people. Now, we'll talk, last night we talked about a lot of experiments, um, and tonight we will too. The human subjects were captive populations usually. The elderly, prisoners, and hospital patients seemed to be uh, the ones that were victimized. I guess they were defenseless who might not have retained their full uh, faculties for informed consent. In other experiments, the subjects were volunteers, but they were willing guinea pigs nonetheless, right? And they actually, MIT had a lot of volunteer ex-workers who used to work for MIT volunteered for a lot of these experiments, folks. I'm not sure if I'll get to that stuff, but... June the 26, 1959, Simi Valley, California, Partial core meltdown at Santa Suana Field Laboratory Sodium Reactor Experiment. That's a mouthful. November 20, 1959, Oak Ridge, Tennessee, USA. Explosion, chemical explosion. And so we're just trying to show people at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. And there was about 15 grams of 239 plutonium. You can't believe a word that comes out of their mouth. Put, always multiply it by 10 particularly when it comes to half lives, because that's how that works. But everything that they say they release, you want to multiply it by 10 to the power or something else. Not whatever they say. You can't believe anything that comes out of their mouth. You really can't. In an experiment in the 1960s, over 100 Alaska citizens were continually exposed to radioactive iodine. Let me read that one again. In an experiment in the 60s, over 100 Alaskan and they had a lot of nuclear detonations up there, by the way. Citizens were continually exposed to radioactive iodine. So radioactive iodine got a short life, right? <clears throat> but, you know, you can't make radioactive iodine-131 without making iodine 10 times more iodine-132. And you can't have the iodine-132 without 20 times more iodine-133. And you can't make iodine-131 without uh, iodine-129 with a 50 million year half-life. And they have a whole lot of other daughters. French tested his first nuclear weapon in the 1960s. And, okay, we're back up to speed. 
1960, Arctic Ocean released a nuclear material, uh, K-8, Soviet nuclear fleets, uh, 61 nuclear reactor testing station, Idaho, USA, that was the SL-1, we covered that, I'm just getting everybody back up to speed, and anybody that knew is coming aboard. The Soviet hotel class submarine, K-19, suffered a failure in 1961, the reactor core temperatures hit 1500 degrees, nearly enough to melt the fuel rods, but once again, uh, even the new cores, uh, the containment vessels, will melt at 1500. And the cores might not melt down until, I'm not sure what it is, 3000 degrees, I think it is, or I can't remember off the top of my head, sorry. It's from 61 to 65 at the Massachusetts, uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, 20 subjects aged 60 to 83 were injected or fed radium or thorium to estimate internal doses and to measure passages of these substances through their bodies. Many of these subjects came from the nearby Age Center of New England, a research facility established is closed now to investigate the process of aging and needs of the elderly. These experiments thus represent a perversion of the center's original purpose, and since feeding the subjects radium and thorium did not benefit them as individuals or the elderly population as a whole. Uh, most of the subjects were obtained. According to material received from the Department of Energy, the Age Center of New England was a nonprofit research facility established in 1954 to investigate the process of aging and the needs of the elder elderly. The center's pool of subjects consisted of several hundred apparently healthy men and women over the age of 50 who had declared their willingness to be studied in a variety of research projects on aging. Not how long you would survive after they injected you with radioactive material, but on how to live longer, see? Yeah, I'll, I'll participate in how to live longer. Yeah. Roll up your sleeve. <laughs> Can you imagine the people that were doing that and they go home to their wives and, Hi, honey, how was your day? Well, we had a couple of old people who didn't like the needle. I had to slap them around a little bit, give them some old good old plutonium uranium, and we'll see who's the boss in a couple of weeks when they're all sick and cancerous and can't stand up. <laughs> I'm going to do them really good, honey. You bet, sweetie, you're the money maker. In 1957, the first published annual report of the AIDS Center described the following researchers. These subjects lived elsewhere and had to be, um, so, oh, sorry, hang on. The center's pool of subjects consisted of several hundred apparently willing to be studied. These subjects lived, uh, so they had to be active enough to come to the center, so they were healthy. This is uh, some of the findings from a, a Senate hearing. Hang on. Feeding the subjects radium and thorium was of no direct benefit to the subjects or the elderly population as a whole and was not related to the phenomenon connected to the aging process. Well, it is if you're trying to stop the aging process. You can stop the aging process by killing them, right? So, I mean, it's like a sick joke they probably laughed about every morning around coffee. <laughs> yeah, well, stop aging there, right, for them. They got no worries. Everything comes to an end. Yeah, he never got a day older. He's still in that coffin, rotting away. In the first phase, subjects were injected with either radium or thorium, and the passage to their body was measured. The principal reason for these experiments was to calibrate counting equipment that could be used in the second phase, twisted, which was the oral ingestion of mixtures of radium and thorium. Excretion and whole body counting was also monitored for the phase two patients and these experiments were reported to the Atomic Energy Commission in annual progress reports, right? So, skip ahead, January 30, uh, 1961, Idaho Falls uh, was that one. We just covered it. I know, because you got to realize I've been filling this folder up for a long time, so some of this stuff is going to get repeated, and I'll try to catch it before I do that to you. January 24, 1961, B-52 crash. You guessed it. Caught fire and exploded in midair due to a major leak in its um, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Didn't I cover that one last night? Experienced a decompression event that required it to, uh, here was another one, March the 14th, a B-52 bomber went down. 1961 again, a K-9 suffered a failure, reactor core temperature 
How did I end up over in that one again? 1962, we're safe here. The hand for sight, again, released iodine-131. Yeah, we covered that. Didn't I say 68? I meant to be 50. I thought it was 58. I screwed up, folks. Wow. It's okay. These experiments were designed to determine how fast... During the 1960s at the Los Alamos Scientific Laboratory, 57 normal adults were fed microscopic spears containing radioactive uranium and magnesium. These experiments were designed to determine how fast such spears would pass through the human body after ingestion. It was believed that particles of this size could be produced by the atmospheric re-entry and burn-up of rocket propelled by nuclear reactors. Rockets. Uh, so in the 1960s, they were poisoning people, 57 normal adults, because they wanted to find out what would happen if they had an accident with one of the rockets. And so these people continued to run your government for decades later. Their children now run your governments. Their children are running your communities. Their children are running these same types of experiments, right? Yeah, really sick, uh, twisted system. 1961-62, 10 Utah state prison inmates had blood samples taken, which were mixed with radioactive chemicals and re-injected back into their bodies. And so when you think about what's happening in Fukushima and North America and the Pacific Ocean and how they have this entire history of uh, testing good-natured people, not telling them the truth of how dangerous it is, um, it's not hard to imagine what really is going on out there. Uh, due to improper sealing of the shaft, a French 1962 accident vented into the environment. During 1963, at the Patelli Memorial Institute, Richland, Washington, five subjects were injected with radioactive phosphorus. In addition, five subjects were fed fish from the Columbia River which contained radioactive phosphorus produced and discharged into the river by reactors at the Atomic Energy Commission's Hanford site. These experiments were designed to estimate the dose of the humans eating contaminated fish, 1963. Now Hanford, in that same period, had dumped 450 billion, billion would it be, gallons directly into the soil out of their containers. And they have 41 miles, and today they're saying, oh, no, nothing leaks into the river. How can you dump all that stuff into the river? Or in There's 200 miles of groundwater at Hanford, and that's what they've been saying now for two decades. It's never changed. There's always 200 miles of ground river at Hanford. Now, Hanford is 500 square miles, but they say there's 200 miles at Hanford that is contaminated. Do you think that that always stayed there, that has never worked this way? Of course not. And so they don't even want to try. It would, you would actually bankrupt America trying to clean up Hanford. Right? You would bankrupt it. Hanford actually, and that's true, I got that from a whole bunch of uh, speakers over the years, but Hanford um, made most of the plutonium was made at Hanford. That stuff was all shipped over to WIP. And WIP, of course, you know, uh, New Mexico, Carlsbad, right? How a truck fire down at one of the salt trucks in the mine caught fire and for nine days nobody went back in that mine because truck fires are so freaking dangerous and that's because they were storing plutonium and uranium 238 down there and they got unions they ain't going anywhere uh, like the fukushima where they got the homeless and they go wherever the, they were threatened to go wherever they punched and beaten to go but uh, what i'm trying to explain to you is that they know at the Columbia River, and that goes right out into the Pacific Ocean and comes right down the coastline, has been doing that for uh, four decades, five decades straight. It's just hemorrhaging out of there. They got 41 miles of open pits full of the yellow cake and the plutonium and all the other evil stuff they got down there. Open pits. I'm going to come over and double check. Double check. And make sure everything is going to work okay here. Hang on. It's a bit of a nightmare tonight, folks. So I have to put up notations at the beginning of it that the video don't start for the first 10 minutes. And it's pretty slow getting started at 15 minutes. 
and make sure everything's going good. Everything looks good over here in your end, folks. Hi, Miss Milky. Miss Milky's here, folks. Steve Moyer's here. He's busy too. Original Punisher, Pasha, Grandma Goalie, Craig, Kathy, Green Row Project. And Green Row Project is working, like, been at this a long, long time, folks. Long time, okay? A very long, long, long time. And you wouldn't believe the amount of uh, knowledge these people have. I'm sure there's more than one. Maybe I'm wrong. It seems like there's more than one anyway. And Sylvia, Cats Alive, Albert, Checks and Balances, Lunar, Peralta, Free Test, Rab Lats. Let me keep going. Because this is rather important. Everything still looks good. 37 minutes in. We'll probably be an extra 10 minutes tonight because it was 10 minutes late getting started and blah, blah, blah. I want to get through some of this shit. I want to get up to the 70s at least. <laughs> anyway. 1963, April 10th, lost a nuclear reactor. The USS Thresher sinks to uh, 350 miles east of Cape Cod. 1964, uh, 41 shots, 64, 48, 65, 48, 38, and 66, 67. I screwed up the night. From 1961 to 63, the University of Chicago, 102 human subjects were fed real folly from the Nevada test site. Stimulated follow particles that contain strontium, barium, cesium, or solutions of strontium and cesium. This is, and this is spelled C E S R U M, by the way. I notice on Wikipedia they're changing that with an A C A E S R U M. They changed it eh? for some reason. I got to figure out what that's all about. This experiment was designed to measure human absorption and retention of these radioactive substances. Once again, that was the University of Chicago. Naragoni National Laboratory, University of Chicago. Scum! Begs. China tested its first nuclear weapons uh, in 1964 at the Lopner test site. Let me keep running. We screwed up tonight, big time. That's okay, we'll just keep going. 1964, well, we, we covered a lot of this last night, but that's okay. Because I, I added a whole bunch of other stuff into that folder because I wanted to touch up on it, so it works out okay. A USAF B-52 on airborne alert, 1964, counter the storm, turbulence, central Pennsylvania, two pilots survived, and the missing weapon was never recovered. 64, B-58 aircraft, carrying a nuclear weapon, caught fire, taxi, and uh, the weapon burnt, the nuclear weapon burnt, biological, radiological uh, releases. 1960, 57 normal adults were fed very small spears containing radioactive uranium-235 and uh, magnesium-54 to determine how long it would take these spears. That's an interesting conversation. It's got anything to do with buckyballs, I wonder. The human subjects received no medical benefits from these experiments. During the experiment, subjects were given a gelatin capsule containing uh, 235 uranium and... Uh, both uranium-235 and magnesium-54 emits radiation, which would penetrate the gelatin. Let me keep going. Bum, 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 bum. One subject repeated ingestion of the samples ten different times to provide an estimate of variations within the same individual. And experiments were conducted at Los Alamos Laboratory, were funded by the Atomic Energy Commission, and document uh, 3365 LA, uh, Los Angeles, 65, the fact sheets. So what you found was injection of uranium salts in 46 and 47, six patients with good kidney functions were injected in increasing doses with uranium nitrate enriched in uranium-234 and uranium-235, which is from the nuclear fission, right? And the objectives of the experiments were to determine a dose of uranium salt which produced renal injury measuring the rate of excretion of uranium salts and absorbed the effect, observed the effects of modifying rates of excretion. These experiments were carried out to the University of Rochester. Woo, Rochester! You're the shit. The experiments were described in uh, June 1948, U-37, UR-37, which apparently was a project report to the Atomic Energy Commission. 65. Uh, Livermore, California, released um, tritium gas. We covered that. Rocky Flats, 85. Um, 
If our rocky flats exposed, the crew 25 to 17 times the legal limit for radiation. There's no legal limit for man-made radiation, okay? There's no, there's no safe limit for man-made radiation. What they do is they take normal radiation, like a banana or a potato that is over there, and then they claim that the, the man-made radioactive isotopes are equal to the, the normal radio, insignificant, stupid, just the stupidest thing imaginable, like a banana has got back holes. Yeah, because everything on the planet, my shirt got back holes, the wires got back holes, the paint got back holes. But it's like, it's irrelevant. It's got nothing to do with, uh, it's not man-made radioactive uh, nuclides that we're talking about, see? And so they throw in natural stuff, which could have huge back holes per second, like 7,500 becquels of potassium-40 in your drinking water, you can drink it, you off gas to 7,500 becquels of potassium-40 in your drinking water. The new standards for North America now are 7,400 becquels per cubic meter of cesium-137. And so you can't have cesium-137 without 30 times more strontium, which is 225,000 becquels a cubic meter. So if you've got a swimming pool, you're going to be putting your children into a radioactive environment. That's unbelievable, because cesium gathers up in the water, but you can't have the cesium without the strontium, you can't have any other without the uranium, without the plutonium and all their daughters. Okay, 1965, coast of Japan, lost of a nuclear bomb, whatever, A4E Skyhawk, aircraft with a B-43 nuclear bomb on board, fell off the aircraft carrier. Next one, January 1766, B-52 carrying four hydrogen bombs, clawed it with a tanker, we covered it. 66, I screwed up tonight, sodium cooling system malfunctions at uh, Fermi, Marinko Fermi demonstration breeder reactor causing par partial core meltdown. Yeah, I screwed up. I meant to have some other stuff in this folder. 1967 study that was published in the Journal of Clinical Investigation Pregnant women were injected with radioactive cortisol to see if it would cross the barrier and affect the fetuses. 67, Hanford Environmental Health Foundation. 14 subjects injecting or drinking radioactive material. 1967, meltdown of Dumfries and Gallows. 1967, 38 nuclear tests. Um, Mississippi, New Mexico at 48. 69 uh, was Nevada Test Site 48, 69 also 53 in Alaska, uh, 1970, 16 in Nevada Test Sites, 1971, 72, Alaska 34, including the largest U.S. underground detonation, 68 only France and China were detonating nuclear weapons in the open air, 68 once again, a fire broke out uh, on a B-52, Near Greenland, uh, crashed it. Uh, May 22, 1968, loss of a nuclear reactor and two nuclear warheads, USS Scorpion, sank in route. Right, we covered that one. 24, 68, once again. 18 times normal, K140 suffered a non controllable increase of radioactive power output. 69, Rocky Flats, Colorado. Five kilograms plutonium burst inside a glove box at Rocky Flats. Now, a gram of it, aerosol, is more radioactive than the act, active atoms, and each atom has an isotope in it. And if it's uranium plutonium, it's got a, like a plutonium got 24,000 year half life times 10, so it's 240,000. Uranium is 4.5 billion. This is went through a chain reaction, so it's ionized radiation. And so the natural uranium out there, that's got 4.5 billion years, and they throw that into the conversation. It's named the same, but it's not ionized. It's not through a chain reaction. And this is how they confuse you and manipulate you and deceive you. 1969, 50 kilograms uranium melted inside the A1 nuclear reactor, the St. Lawrence, so during a refueling operation in France. And you don't know how bad that was. But once again, all these melted reactors, all these partial meltdowns, all these massive releases, all these friggin' accidents, all these experiments. 1970, Bay of Biscal, loss of a nuclear submarine. Let me keep going. 52 sailors. 
on board suffering fires in two compartments simultaneously. Both reactors were shut down. The crew attempted to hook a tow line to a, a merchant vessel, but ultimately failed. They lost the sub. A 1970 Nevada test site, accidental venting of nuclear explosion. Yukon Flats, 10 kiloton Banbury weapon test. 900 feet below the Earth's surface. A plume of hot gases. So that's radioactive fallout in all those communities around the Nevada test site and in the next states. Every nuclear detonation is a radioactive plume, right? That radio, that's a radioactive plume for communities within a thousand miles before that thing is dispersed. And even if it disperses for a million years, if you ingest those hot radioactive particles, right, your autoimmune system goes into overdrive, you become weak, susceptible to all kinds of illnesses, and 5, 10, 15 years later, tumors and a cyst and everything starts to grow in the body. And then you have snow, uh, like in California, going to fall out to three diverting jet streams layers conducting radionuclides across the U.S. Where did I leave off on that one, too? A plume of hot gases and radioactive dust was released three and a half minutes after ignition and continued for many hours. So that was a big plume came out of the Yukon Flats. I don't know what the winds were blowing that day. Oregon and Washington is cited here. Northeast California, northern Nevada, southern Idaho. The three diverging jet streams layers conducted radionuclides across the U.S. and to Canada, the Gulf of Mexico. You had 86 workers at the site were exposed to radioactivity, but according to the Department of Energy, none received a dose exceeding site's guidelines. They just keep raising the guidelines, and they don't do any kind of accurate counting. And the number one job is to come out and lie, manipulate, lie, manipulate, lie, manipulate. 1960 and 1971, funded by the Defense Atomic Support Agency, performed whole-body radiation experiments on more than 90 poor black and terminally ill cancer patients with inoperable tumors. They don't operate in tumors for the blacks back then anyway. Uh, Cincinnati Medical Center, University of Cincinnati. Once again, nightmares. These patients were given 100 or more RADs, whole-body radiation, and caused intense pain and vomiting. Critics have questioned the medical rationale for this study and contend that the main purpose of the research was to study the acute effects of radiation exposure on poor, black, and terminally ill patients. Funded by the Defense Atomic Support Agency. Wow. Just wow. Once again, that was the University of Cincinnati. And, you know, they're still in business. They're still monsters. They're still maggots on our society. 63 to 60, uh, 71, 67 inmates at Oregon State Prison and 64 inmates at Washington State Prison receive x-rays to their tests to examine the effects of ionizing radiation on humans' testicular functions. Subjects had to agree to receive vasectomies because they didn't want any little mutants running around after completion of the experiments. Wicked. Radiation Experiments, 1960-61, the Department of Defense funded non-consensual, consensual, <laughs> they done that too, whole body radiation experiments on the poor black cancer patients. That's what I was just telling you about. Once again, see, you know, I got this stuff here, double them. I'm shocked at sometimes. 67, let me jump back, because they done a study in 72, but a Berkeley radiologist learned that one of the injected patients from those experiments had lived, and that was from, wait now. She investigated the whereabouts of other patients, anyway, in 1972 from human trials that they didn't know about, and published a scientific paper in 1972, noting the four patients were then still alive. Uh, in a follow-up investigation, Department of Energy determined that nine patients died within three years, one in eight years, and one each in 11, 14, and four after 20 years. One was lost to follow up, and one was still living as of October 83. In one case, the original diagnosis of disease later proved to be inaccurate. You can't believe anything. There was, when they say nobody was harmed or they try to minimize numbers, you can't believe it. 
December 72, New York, USA, contamination, major fire, two explosions contaminated the plant, the grounds of plutonium fabrication facility resulting in a permanent shutdown. New York, permanent shutdown. So they had followed all over that community in New York again. In 73, the Center for Human uh, Radio Radiobiology, Argoni National Laboratory, still in business, initiated a follow-up study of surviving patients in a program to exhume Hume deceased to patients for whom permission could be obtained. These studies were designed to examine how much plutonium remained in the bodies of the subject. What Whip will tell you is like licking your cell phone charger. Or you get more radiation from a banana, or you get more radiation walking in the sunshine, or you get more radiation from a dental x-ray than you would for plutonium. But as you're seeing, you know, plutonium is not going to leave your body. Unless you cremate it, a lot of it got liberated into the environment, but you still left some in your body because they went looking for it repeatedly. They dig up the dead 20, 30 years later. Oh, yeah, look, we've done experiments on these poor black kids. Let's go dig up their bodies and let's get some more data. And they always say that it wasn't about getting data. And 20, 30 years later, they go dig up the bodies to get more data. Uh, 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 uh. Consequently, patients alive in 1973 were not informed that they had been injected with plutonium in the 40s. And relatives of the deceased patients were told that they wanted the bodies to determine the composition of unknown mixtures of injected radioactive nuclides. August 11, 1973, steam generator leak causes manual shutdown of pressurized water reactor, Michigan, USA. 1972, 34 nukes. At Alaska and Nevada test site on Chica. 1973, Toggle, 28 test, Colorado. 1974, Arbor, 19 nuclear test um, at the Nevada test site. Nevada test site in 75, 27. And Nevada test site, 21 nuclear test in 76. In 1977, there was 21 tests in that site. In 78, they had 23 tests in Nevada. Sucks to live around Nevada. 1978, um, 1979, Quicksilver, uh, 18 in Nevada. 1980, Tinderbox was 15 in Nevada. 1981, uh, 16 nuclear tests. That was called a Guardian, Nevada. All weapons, I mean, you know, think about all the radioactive fallout in all the communities. Think about Hiroshima. Think about Nagasaki. How is that any different than Nevada? Or Alaska, sending off all those nuclear weapons and the radioactive fallout from all that material. How is that any different? Well, in Hiroshima, the military, the American military went in there and uh, they got everybody and they cataloged everybody leaving in, in that city, right? Whereas in the nuclear testing, they never went into Nevada to see if anybody got sick after the test. And, you know, there was another thing about nuclear tests that was discovered but only released in the last four or five years was that a nuclear weapon detonation, no matter which country was doing it, they seen the water change its structure up to 2,000 miles away. So in a circumference of 2,000 miles, the water after nuclear detonation changed the structure for months physically changed the structure of the water, the cell, uh, the atoms, the line of the atoms. And you heard me talking about structured water before. So if you add chemicals to your water, you could do that too, right? Change the structure of your water. Uh, but it's an interesting note that that reverberates through the water uh, 2,000 miles away. That's what they're doing with nuclear stuff. They're attacking water. India officials, uh, India is not a party to the non-nuclear, non-proliferation treaty. And they had peaceful nuclear explosives in 1994, what they call it. Smalling Buddha. The tests were the first test and the creation of the NPD. They created new questions about how civilian nuclear technology can be diverted secretly to weapons purposes, dual-use technology. And uh, India's secret development caused great concern and anger, particularly from nations such as Canada, that has supplied its nuclear reactors for peaceful and power generation needs. <laughs> it appears to have been primarily motivated as a general deterrent as well as an attempt to protect, project India as a regional superpower. Uh, 
arguing that it is unnecessarily restricted peaceful activities. Let me keep going. Even after a 1974 test, India maintained that its nuclear capabilities were primarily peaceful. What did you do with all your waste, India? We haven't got you in this list here of your shit. We know what you, everybody else done with it. And we know what kind of atrocious human rights is going on in India where a million children starve to death every year of dysentery, diarrhea, and pneumonia. October 1975, Guam. Spill of irradiated water while disable a submarine tender USS Proche discharge radioactive coolant water. A Geiger counter showed uh, high numbers, 50 times the allowable dose. This is after diluted in the local water. But a diluted radioactive isotope is never, you can't dilute a radioactive isotope. You can take an isotope and put it in a glass of water. And if you could, you can take it out and put it in another glass of water. And say it was salt water with 75 to 100 million phytoplankton, which may, the basis of the food chain makes oxygen. It would kill all that and the trillions of other creatures in a glass of salt water. 75 to 100 tri uh, million phytoplankton, which makes us oxygen, and are the bases, are the very bases of the food chain. That isotope would kill all that. And if you took that isotope and put it in another glass of water, and it'll keep doing that for its entire lifetime. And that's what you mean by the cesium. 20 years later, we'll get back to Japan because it just flies around the ocean. It doesn't delude like the woods hole creatures are always saying. 1975, and so we're going to go for an extra 10 minutes tonight because I screwed up so bad. 75, location unknown, contamination, radioactive resin, contaminates American sturgeon class submarine, USS Guardfish, blah, 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 1975. 1975, March 22nd, Alabama, USA. Fire burned for several hours and damaged more than 1,600 control cables for three nuclear reactors, disabling the core cooling systems. But it's okay, it's like a banana, it's like jack shit. November the 5th, 1975, Nebraska, USA, hydrogen explosion damaged the Cooper nuclear facility, boiling water reactor, and an auxiliary building. But hey, nuclear power is the most safest thing on the planet, Dana. Why are you telling people this? We need to keep that secret that this shit happens every friggin' year, multiple times a year. August 1976, explosion, contamination of workers, Washington, Breton country, at the Hanford site, plutonium finishing plant, blew out a quarter inch thick lead glass window. <coughs> Harold McCluskey, a worker who was showered with nitric acid and radioactive glass. He inhaled the largest dose of 241 americium ever recorded, 500 times the U.S. government occupational standard. The worker was placed in isolation for five months and given an experimental drug to flush the isotope from his body. <coughs> by 1977, his body's radiation count had fallen by about 80%. And he died of natural causes in 87 at the age of 75. So they kept him alive, say, and then they can use him as a propaganda machine till the end of time. But the Hanford site blew up again, see? 1977, the coast of Kamchatka lost in recovery of a nuclear warhead. The K-171 accident released a nuclear warhead. And they had a dozen ships and aircrafts. This is the Soviets, right? 1977, Waterford, Connecticut, USA, hydrogen gas explosion damages three buildings and forces shutdown. Hyd Once again, hydrogen gas explosion. Which, by the way, this cigarette haven't got chemicals. You're just joining us. We got another. We're going to go an hour and ten minutes tonight. I'll stop before that and say hi to everybody. Apologize for being so slack tonight. 1978, Fukushima, Unit 1. Where did I hear Fukushima before? Hmm. Japan's first critical casualty accident at number 3 reactor. This accident was hidden for 29 years and reported on the 22nd of March, 2007. On March 2011, they really lost it at that Fukushima, right? So 1978, they had huge issues. Huge issues, and he hit it for 29 years. Unbelievable. January 24, 78, Northwest Territories, Canada, spilled a nuclear fuel. Cosmo 954, a Soviet radar ocean reconnaissance satellite with an onboard nuclear reactor. 
failed to separate from his booster and broke up on re-entry over Canada. Thanks, Russia. You're awesome. Well, Soviet. Yeah. Let me get back to where I was talking about. Soviet Union. Eventually paid the Canadian government $3 million for expenses related to the crash. $3 million. Fucking joke. Disgusting. May 22, 1978, Puget Sound, Washington. A valve was mistakenly opened aboard the submarine USS Puffer, releasing up to 500 U.S. gallons of radioactive water. Just fucking assholes. Sorry, folks, it pisses me off. But November 1978, major loss of coolant accident, Manitoba, Canada. 3,000 liters of coolant oil released, most of it into the Winnipeg River. The repair took several weeks. Not sure what that was all about. Once again, Canada is a screw up. And there is extensive evidence Israel has nuclear weapons. Of course, we know that now. Or a near ready nuclear weapon capability. There's also speculation Israel had tested a nuclear weapon along South Africa in 1979. Unbelievable, eh? Demona. In 1986, a former Dimona technician, Vanuo, disclosed extensive information about the nuclear program to the British press, 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 including photographs of the secret areas of the nuclear site, some of which depicted nuclear weapon cores and designs. And he was put in jail and still in jail. Well, he's released now, isn't he? But he's not allowed to talk to anybody, and he's under house arrest, basically. And he's threatened all the time. No, he moved out of the country, didn't he? No, I can't even remember. I might as well give it up. Next, 1979, Pennsylvania. Three Mile Oil accident. And Three Mile Oil... Three Mile... Um, did that get past me? Three Mile Island had a 50% meltdown. And because you're around these big cities... Let that thing get out of the way here. What the hell? I don't recognize that loud noise anyway. That's it. especially at this hour of night. Three Mile Island. Uh, the thing about the community is always moving in these big cities. They, they never even bother trying to track how much carnage came out of that. Uh, France in 1979, radioactive fluids escaped into drains and seeped in, into the local watersheds. Uh, 1979, Virginia, USA, Unit 2 shut down in response to failing tube bundles and steam generators. Uh, and September 18, 1980, I'll stop right here, 1980. So we'll pick up the moral night on the first one in 1980. I'll read it tonight and I'll read it again as we start the moral night, but I'll stop there so I don't get confused. 6.30 p.m., an airman conducting maintenance on a USAF Titan II missile at the Little Rock Air Force Base Launch Complex. Southside Van Burden country, just north of Damascus, Alaska, Arkansas, dropped a socket from a socket wrench, fell 80 feet before hitting and piercing the skin of a rocket's first stage fuel tank, causing it to leak. The area was evacuated. Uh, the, uh, September 19th, it exploded. The W-53 warhead landed about 100 feet from the launch's complex's entry gate. Its safety features operated correctly and prevented any loss of radioactive material. An Air Force airman was killed and the launch complex was destroyed. And so I'm going to stop on that. <clears throat> and I want you to think about, uh, and I don't know if I got them here or not. I think there's a bunch of them come up here later. Uh, the repairmen for the missile silos, and they had around 50,000 missile silos. And there's just an amazing amount of stories about these people and the things they'd done and how they suited up and they went in and they stopped these missiles from going critical in their bunkers and farmer fields all over America. There's just endless stories about that. You can't trust anything nuclear. Everything nuclear is horrible. There's nothing good about nuclear. Nuclear is 3% of the energy on the planet and 100% of the threat to the entire planet. It's 3% of the energy, 100% of the threat. It's destroying everything about everything good on this planet. It's mutating everything on this planet. It's, Japan is completely, completely collapsed as a society. They're irradiated from one end to the very 
other end, from east to west, from north to south. Their entire coastlines are millions of becos, no matter where you get in the water. The entire country, no matter which community you're into, the numbers are unbelievable. They say they're decontaminating it. What they're doing is they're scraping up shit, they're taking it, they're grinding it up, bringing it to other prefectures and burning it in incinerators. Think about how the Asian Pacific pollution plumes comes right across and to North America in just a couple of days when they finally move out of the cities. And they don't even go up into the jet stream, but they do. And what I'm talking about the stuff that can make it across the Pacific easily and a massive volume without even getting into the jet stream with this pollution. But lots of it gets up into the jet streams when you have a storm show up there and moves pollution out of uh, the Asian uh, big cities. It gets lifted up and, you know, forest fires will send those great big particles up into the jet stream. Fukushima is St. Patty's Day every day. Not only into the environment, not only for over 1,100 days, but also into the ocean. And think about radiation. You can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't hear it, you can't feel it, you can't touch it, you can't pick it up. And just imagine if that radiation was like dye on St. Paddy's Day, because that's actually what's going on, but you can't see it. But it's actually like St. Paddy's Day, where you put dye into the river 1,440 minutes a day for 1,100 days, without a break, with no future break in, in coming. It's not going to stop because we won't deal with it. Japan is putting in the homeless, the most vulnerable of society. They can't do that job. They can't do that job. Uh, they can't read. They can't write. They got the shakes. They, they're dysfunctional. They can't even hold a job. They don't even have a home. They can't even figure out where the next meal is coming from each day. Is that the people that we should have uh, doing this job? Of course not. Japan won't let other international communities in there. The only one that got, got in there was the NRC, and all they done was told Japan how to cover it up and told the media here in North America how to cover it up. And let me, let me, let me be very clear. We will not forgive the media for what they have done. We will not forgive the mouthpieces, the apologists for what they have done. We intend to hold you accountable till the end of time. We are going to be relentless. They don't call us the Fukushima hounds for nothing. There's no way that this can continue without the public involved in it. We have to put an end to this. We have to take 4,800 peer review academic studies every day and get them to work on these solutions that we need for future generations. We can't let a handful of corporations and elites destroy everything. We just can't. That's why we're here every night. Some nights we screw up like the night, but most nights we get it right. We're we're adamant that what we say is true, what we say is accurate. And what I'm doing last night, tonight, and the morning, night, and the night after is I'm going to give you a list of how sh many screw-ups these people have done and have managed to cover up and hide away and minimize the truth. And we need the truth out there so people can have a handle on it. So the people that think that everything is good realizes that you can't trust the system and that's so that we all understand that we can't trust the system. The system has no intention of doing the moral or ethical thing. Think about Russia in the late 40s evacuated 7,500 communities and 9,000 square miles permanently. That was the ethical, moral thing to do. That's what they should be doing with Japan. That's what they should be doing with a lot of communities in Canada and the United States that bore the brunt of the radioactive fallout and continues to bore the brunt of the radioactive fallout. It's not just Canada. It's not just North America, it's not just Japan, it's the Pacific Ocean and every Pacific Rim country that cannot avoid this St. Paddy's Day, endless Groundhog's Day routine and that we need, we need what we're doing to push back. We need to push back. We need to bring people on board. And that's what we're going to be attempting to do with everything that we're doing. So we'll give it up. I'll come over and say hi and good night to everybody. I'm sorry I screwed up tonight. I'm sorry. I learned my lesson. Set the chummy at 20 beats a second and everything will be fine tomorrow night. The audio should be a lot better tonight. I'm hoping I'll come in and listen to some of it after. And that was the idea. Give you a little bit higher quality stream, but I had to work the kinks out and that cost us the first 20, 25 minutes. I got off track. 
I repeated a bunch of shit from last night, but I had some other stuff in there. But just to know that, you know, it's not going to stop just because I make mistakes. I'm not going to give it up. That's how I learn. I make mistakes sometimes, like everybody else, right? Hi, Laurie. Good night. Annie Beck. Real Night Writer. Pasha. Toxic. MSVS. Cats Alive. Original Punisher. Real Night Writer again. Uh, Aqua Albert. Amthurst. Peraltra. Yeah, thanks, Kathy. Mickey. Thank you. Great comment, buddy. Checks and balances. Thank you, my friend. Jill, thank you. Missing Sky, once again, you know, I say thank you, people. You people are humble me all the time. And it's okay. I need that. I always keep that straight. Miss Milky missed the screw up. Ha ha. And um, that's okay. You can catch it later. <laughs> I don't recommend it. I'll put a notation at the video when it pops back up. Uh, Marine Chemez. What the fuck does that mean? I am Jay Cullen. I am an oceanographer. I report data. What the fuck is that all about? Fuck off. You're a scumbag. You tell lies. You tell people that the radiation from Fukushima, if you really are him, is like an x-ray. Okay, we covered it on the site. I think you're just somebody making it up with salacious account. Because uh, why else would you be here? What are you fucking stalking me or something? Get the fuck out of here, man. <coughs> and don't forget, Days Maze the same. Don't forget about the nuclear fracking and all the waste that goes down in those shitholes. Yeah, I got that there. It'll show up. Hi, Paul. Thank you, everybody. Otama, Dissity. Yeah, I know. I just screwed up. I just apologize. And you know me. Um, thank you, Amters. Catastrophic bank banana blanket, I was going to call you. <laughs> Catastrophic blanket. <laughs> Mervin, Kate. <laughs> Audio was good. That's good, Annie Beck. Thank you. Yeah, I seen that chill. Someone said there were Jay Cullen. I think that's just only being salacious. Why would Jay Cullen show up here repeatedly? Unless he was a psychopath, which we know he is. Is a uh, retarded because he came out and he told Canadians right that uh, radiation from Fukushima is okay it's like a normal background radiation if you ingest radiation from Fukushima it's got nothing to do with a background or an x-ray rather it's just an outrageous outright misrepresentation and from the University of BC that really got under my skin thanks Laurie original Punisher Kate hugs Kate Robert uh, DJ Bizzle, Lunar, I'm back on tomorrow night, DJ, uh, we got, we got a lot to get through, tomorrow night we starts off at, uh, 1980, I only covered one headline from 1980 tonight, so I can't screw that up, uh, that's okay, Jill, Diamond Dog, I'm lazy now. I don't want to say goodnight now. I'm just sitting here. Blah, blah, blah. Dana, Dana, Dana. Okay, Janet, Kate. Yeah. I'm just trying to figure out what everybody's saying there. Okay, we give it all up. That was a long stream tonight. My apologies. Whatever. It's for Saturday night, I don't really expect anybody to show up tonight. I expect people to watch it on Sunday to get a free chance. And so that's okay. We'll give it up. We'll put this aside. Zad, zad, zad. Uh, I don't know what kind of context that your remark is. Dog uh, Utubi. I heard 13% is nuclear power. I got no idea. We'll come in tomorrow night. We'll pick up hardcore. I'm going to start the show off. Just swinging. And starting off 1980 and get all the way up to 1990 tomorrow night. And then I'll come in and say hi to everybody to make up for the 10 minute screw up tonight so tomorrow starts off with a bang and i'll come in and we'll chat for a few minutes and um we'll get through um tomorrow night i just say we get through the 90s and there's some really good stuff there but i'm not i better not say night i better stop it right now because i'll give it all away before tomorrow night what's the sense of doing that tomorrow night if i give it away tonight right and i'm looking forward to seeing what this worked out like who knows one of those nights where you just we got through it, so that's, that's okay. 
We'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Um, I don't know what to do about the uh, hound site. I'm going to have to look into that when I get a chance. I haven't stopped all day. And I want to find out what's going on there. I got a computer that I got to start reformatting tonight or tomorrow because it's been hacked. And then my email is hacked. I got to try to figure that one out. So, yeah, I got a bit of fun ahead. We'll see you folks tomorrow night. Hugs for everybody. Hey, folks, know I love you. You know, folks, I, I absolutely adore you. And I, I get you, okay? I read your comments every friggin' night. I just don't have time. And because Google doesn't allow me to go reply. And when you read 1,000, 1,200, 1,400, you forget, right? But the next night when you're reading the comments and you remember. And that's how it kind of works for me. That's what I mean by that. That's, that's really cool because I can keep it in context when I'm reading it. But trying to remember 1,400 comments later, you know, I'm probably going to have to do a video about that one of these days. We'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Nope, we'll catch you folks right now. Google's not going to let me go that easy. Hour and 16 minutes. Shocking. That's okay. Come on, Google. You can do it. You're a big boy. But at least anyway, it looks like we got a lot better audio. And maybe it's a better video stream. As long as I don't go 15 frames a second. Come on, Google. And so we'll catch you folks tomorrow night. Now it says I'm up for two hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> Take care, folks.